We're now joined by former cabinet minister, ANC NEC member and uh, uh, ANC veteran, Mr. Ngwako Ramatlodi. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Good evening to you. Um, this and to your viewers. Thank, thank you so much for giving us uh, your time. Um, this sixth policy conference, uh, you've sat in a number of these over the decades. How important is this one, do you think, in the life of the ANC and the country? Well, um, we are at a crossroad, I mean, as a country. Economically, we are on our knees and all of us collectively then see civil society, political parties beyond the NC, business, trade unions, all of us need to put our heads together to rescue our, our country from the abyss. Do you, do you see the party united enough to come up with concrete policies or are you fearful that there could be factional issues distracting? There will be factional issues, but I believe the NC is strong enough to manage that tension. So, so what do you see as the key issues that have to go on the table? You've, you've mentioned the economy. Uh, what else do you think really needs to be settled and decided? Well, the economy is the foundation of everything in society. Everything else flows from that. It's anchored on the economy. So the economy is the one thing we must fix. All right, but the, the ANC has never really had a problem with creating policy. Policies have always been quite strong and quite good. What has been a challenge over the years has been implementation. So the question then might be, what will be different this time around? You can come up with great policies, great ideas. How can you convince the, the, the voters that you're able to carry through these policies? Well, what that means is that we must focus principally and primarily on implementation, which you are pointing out as an Achilles heel for the NC and the government. Um, to, to, to overcome that, we have to put and deploy in positions of responsibility all the skills that we can find in South Africa regardless of race, gender or colour. Is that, does that mean re-looking cadre deployment in, in its uh, current format? Because a lot of people point fingers at that being uh, the main cause of the problem of getting the wrong people in the wrong jobs. Um, Kaida deployment is not a problem in my view. It's when you deploy wrong cadres in positions of responsibility. Mm. But there's always political pressure, isn't it, ab about these appointments? Um, whether it is to appease a certain grouping, um, do you think that the party is able to look past that and say, Ngwago Ramatlodi is the best person for this, even if he doesn't belong to my faction. Well, at the end of the day, if we don't overcome that, then we are going to sink with the country or sink the country with us. All right. There are a number of issues that are plaguing the party at the moment. Um, uh, some of the debates around the step aside rule and uh, you've got some provinces who want it done away with there was a reason that it was brought into being in the first place would it be damaging if it was altered or taken away well um step aside 
should not have eyes at the stage of implementation. It must not see, it must be blind like justice. Yes, um, but again the question now becomes, do you do away with it? Because there are provinces that are saying that this is a big issue for them. It's not a small issue when you implement it wrongly. It becomes huge, large, larger than life. So you're saying that the problem has not been the policy, but rather how it's been used and deployed? Correct. How has it been misused? Um, because it would suggest that some people don't get step aside, don't get forced to step aside, and others are forced to step aside. Or are we saying that the way that the, the prosecuting authorities come after people is part of the problem? No, um, it's not even about the prosecuting authorities at this stage. It's about the, the insight of the, NC, the internal issues. And I'm convinced that uh, if we can sort that one out internally, then there's no problem with the step. Okay, let, let, me, let me get you correctly. Are you suggesting that there are some people who ought to have stepped aside that didn't and others were forced to? Well, I think we need to clarify in this policy conference precisely what is it that you should have done or not done in order to be asked to step aside. Okay, I thought it was clear. If you um, are, f are charged by the prosecuting authorities, that's it. Zulim Kinja has not been charged. But he volunteered though, didn't he? <laughs> he resigned. Uh, I don't think that. I don't think you are in the newsroom and I watch you every evening and you did, know did. that he did. He did it under tremendous pressure. Okay. All right. Let's talk about 200 plus names in the state capture report. What should happen to them? Because they haven't been charged yet, some of them. So, how does one handle this? That's why I'm suggesting this conference is timely. Mm. It will assist in clarifying that rule right. and its application. Okay, so the rule should stay, but how it's used for you is what needs to be looked at. Correct. Okay, let's talk about organizational renewal. Is this the kind of thing that gets discussed at a policy conference like this? Obviously, because it's the policy of our organization, our movement, and therefore everything else is up for review, including this matter. Okay, Mr. Ramaflodi, I want to just let, let, you, let, let you listen to a clip from the president at the gala dinner earlier, and then maybe we can chat uh, a little bit more about that. This is what part of uh, President Ramaphosa's speech at the ANC policy conference uh, gala dinner. The creation of jobs is uppermost in our minds as we travel to other parts of the continent to discuss the rules that should govern the African continental free trade area. Or when we arrange for our business people to discuss trade and investment opportunities with their counterparts from other countries. As we travel, and recently we had a visit from Cote d'Ivoire. We visited Cote d'Ivoire in December of last year and little did we know that through that visit, we as South Africa would be able to increase our trade with Cote d'Ivoire by almost 24%. But in their case, in their case, they increased their trade with us by more than 200%. 200% just with one visit as we visited Cote d'Ivoire. And now we are already talking about how we can cooperate between Cote d'Ivoire, a country that we did very little trade with, 
how Cote d'Ivoire, which is the number one producer of cocoa in the world, and the number one producer of cashew nuts in the world, how we can set up operations both here in South Africa and in Cote d'Ivoire to build and create world-class chocolate manufacturing capacity in both countries so that we can take the number one spot that is currently colonized by countries like Switzerland and Belgium and others. Is it possible? Can it be done? I eminently believe that it can be done. And that's exactly what President Potara also believes can be done. So through opening up ourselves to the African continent and dealing with a variety of countries and business people, we're then able to begin to move forward and create great economic opportunities. All right, Mr. Ramachlodi, your thoughts about what the president is talking about there, opening us uh, ourselves to the rest of the continent. On the one hand, you've got the Minister of Home Affairs looking at uh, making migration uh, visas and that kind of thing to be completely reviewed. If it becomes harder to move in and out of South Africa, how do we encourage this trade that the president is uh, trying to encourage? Well, um, the AU has adopted protocols about opening up the economy of the continent to all of us. My sense is um, it has to be done in an orderly manner, in the sense that there must be rules and regulations which apply across the board in all African countries. It can only be South Africa, which it can be only South Africa that relaxes everything and everybody else have blocked us out. Mm. So, so it has to be done in a very systematic way. Otherwise, what happens is that this economy will collapse in a massive way. And this economy is supposed to be the hope and the engine mm -hmm. of the African, together with Nigeria and Ethiopia, Algeria, they are supposed to engineer the African revival, economically speaking. But speaking for us as South Africans, we can't venture out there to the exclusion of the black majority in the economy here. <clears throat> so when you talk about us venturing out as a country, we must understand that we are talking about an integrated and democratized economy in this country. Mm -hmm. And this economy is not democratized. We started talking about the economy earlier and uh, the issue again on the table is job creation. What do we do with those that don't have jobs? Um, there's talk about social protection, um, social grants, basic uh, social income grants. Um, what do you see as being important coming out of uh, creating a, a social net for citizens? What I see going forward is a government and a state that intervenes in the economy, not on the basis of social grants, but assisting our people to create jobs for themselves. Your public works department should not be used just as a welfare department. Let me give an example. In the villages, by the way, I've been Premier of Limpopo for 10 years mm. previously. What we had started there, where we sent our MEC, the then Collins Chabani MEC, the late, to Lesotho to teach our people the skills of manual road building where they take care of their own roads. Now, all what is required is for the government to provide the resources and one or two skilled people 
to lead the community in recreating their own environment. That creates jobs at the local level and it stems and interrupt the flow of people to urban areas. Just a, one simple example. There are many others that I can quote. Mm. All right, perhaps finally, uh, quoting a former President Thabo Mbeki, who said that the ANC doesn't have a plan. Uh, how can this be? You've had plans since 1994. Has, is he misreading uh, the situation? I think, well, you, you said that earlier on, uh, mm. that um, the ANC is not sort of plans yourself. That's what you mm. said earlier on. Mm. I don't want to answer what the president is saying, President Mbeki. But I want to say, in implementing our plans, the government must not substitute people for itself or auction the people's economy to very few hands. In other words, I am suggesting that what we need to do is to follow the example I've just explained earlier on. Let us make South Africa work. Let us use the state. Let us use the government. If you have people uh, growing tomatoes, they must have a market. And that market must be the state. If you have chicken farmers next to a hospital, then you must use state to intervene in the way I'm suggesting. At the moment, that is not there. What is not there, what is lacking, ups, is that the, this government, which I've been part of, has not been able to energize the people to be their own liberators economically. Okay, Mr. Ramatlodi, thank you so much indeed for joining us. Uh, great talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for thank the opportunity. You. All right, that's uh, ANC NEC member Nwako Ramahlodi, former Minister of uh, Public uh, Service and Administration in South Africa between 2015 and 2017. And he was also Premier of the province of Limpopo, uh, talking to us about uh, the things that need to be dealt with by the ANC during its policy conference, which is due to start tomorrow.